This is Swedish Lapland. With an area covering about a quarter of Sweden, it's the home to the midnight sun, roaring wide rivers, 10,000 lakes, a rich wildlife, and endless forest gravel roads. Combined with the Swedish Allemansrätten, where you're basically allowed to pitch your tent anywhere you like at the end of the day, it serves as a huge playground for bikepackers like myself. Hi there, my name is Michael and I'm also known as Bike Touring Mike. And I've been bike touring or bikepacking now for the last 10 years or so. So I live right on the coast here in northern Sweden, just along the Eurovelo. And even though I love living here, when I go on my bikepacking adventures, I like to go up to the heart of Lapland here. So I usually take a bus that takes me to the town of Arvidsjaur and that takes me about two hours. And then I'm right in the heart of Lapland and I have endless of possibilities of gravel roads to choose from. And here in Sweden we have over 300,000 kilometers of gravel roads. So the plan with this adventure was to take that bus up to Arvidsjaur, get out just before Arvidsjaur in the little village of Abotresk and start making my way south along the European Divide Trail. And who better to join me on that adventure than this guy? Hi and welcome to Abortresk here in uh, Swedish Lapland and uh, look who I just found <laughs> here <laughs> hiding out. I was just in the Swine. park eating some burritos and then this Swedish guy came by on his bike. I was like, hey man, let's ride bikes together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the plan is now to uh, ride uh, along either the European Divide Trail or we hit some kind of other roads to take us faster down south. South. That's yeah. where I'm going, going all the way to the Malmo, Skåne. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm hopefully gonna tag along with Ryan for a couple of days. So I yeah. hope you enjoy this adventure with us here. And it's a, it's an honor to be on your channel. Oh, I'm in your shadow. Oh. It's an honor <laughs> to be on your channel. I've been watching it. Hey, Yesveria. Oh, hello, <laughs> all the bike touring Mike friends. Um, this is really fun. This is special and we're gonna have a good time. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> The European Divide Trail is a newly created bikepacking route that is meant to be the European counterpart of the Great Divide mountain bike route. It's 7,600 kilometers long, starting in northern Norway and ending in southern Portugal. And a big chunk of it, in fact more than a third, goes through my home country, Sweden. And most of that is on quiet forest gravel roads. We got off to an early start the first morning and it took us less than five minutes before we ran into the first surprise of the day. Look at this, there's an entire herd of reindeer on the road. Oh my god! Even though Ryan had a couple of encounters with reindeer during his first couple of days, this was something completely different. This time of year it's pretty rare to find big herds of reindeer like this in this area. Usually the Sami herders move their herds up to the mountains where the reindeer can roam around in a much milder climate. After crossing the mighty Sjöleftö river named after my hometown by the way, we took a nice little fika break at one of the thousands of free shelters that are scattered all over Sweden. We yeah. can't stay too long or... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Let me get a photo of this. <laughs> YouTubers YouTubing. <laughs> All right. Let's get a shot of this. Actually, we both sit in the front and we'll look. No. We, we don't get into the shade. Just for just a shot. That's the difficult part sometimes when you, you want to mm -hmm. look at the, mm -hmm. the lake. Yeah. <laughs> but then your back is in mm -hmm. front of it. Camp <laughs> right here. Check out this beautiful river. Right at the camp. So we made a stop at this place here by the Schlefter River that I found last week when I was cycling through this area. It's a really beautiful place, this one. And uh, if we were to stumble upon a place like this in, in, uh, later in the afternoon, it would be a great place to put up our tents. But we have to get going now and uh, make our way south. So we're making a little stop here. Ryan is just setting up his drone in front of us. I'm not bringing a drone on this trip. Uh, I'm not competing with the master of drone shots <laughs> up ahead here. So I'm leaving that to Ryan to do instead. I got your drone shots for you. Difficulty. Swedish dance. Swedish dance. <laughs> Get all the to bugs. Get the bugs off. <laughs> not only do you have mosquitoes, but now we're having horse flies. There we go. So we just found this shelter here by the side of the road and figured it was time to take a lunch. And we've been pretty busy so far. We've almost made a hundred kilometers. So we're, we're well into this day. We got off to an early start this morning. So that surely helped. So the goal of today is to make it to Lixele, which is uh, the next major town here in Lapland. And, uh, Ryan's been feeling a bit of an ache in his right knee, so we're hoping to get there before the sporting goods store closes for the evening. So he's going to look at getting some flat pedals in Lixele. So we just made it onto the Vindel River Trail, which I've gone down many times before. and. We stopped here at Vormforsen and I thought I'd show Ryan some of the impressive rapids along this river here behind me, the Vindel River. And the Vindel River is one of the four rivers that are unaffected by hydropower here in Sweden. So it's a really wild river. So we're getting close to Lixel now. I think we have about three kilometers left or so. And we've been on a pretty major road for the last hour. And uh, we finally saw this nice gravel road that should take us all the way into Lixel in a couple of minutes here. <laughs> So we're finally in Lixele and uh, we're heading off for tonight's dinner which consists of probably a burger here at Frasses.
try this shower room to see if it works. Yep. And my towel. So I typically try to stay away from these huge campgrounds like the one that we're staying in tonight. But as we pass this campground on our way into the town of Lixule, we kind of got the sensation that this place was kind of low-key at the moment. We're right between midsummer, which is a major holiday here in Sweden and uh, when people get off for their four weeks of vacation during the summer. So it's pretty low-key all around the facilities here in the Lixule campground. As you can see behind me, my tent and uh, Ryan's plus there's also one over there somewhere are the only tents at the campground. There are also a couple of people staying in camper vans and uh, RVs over there but they're quite far away. So it kind of feels like we have the place all to ourselves. And they even have a sauna at this campground, which was really nice. I stayed there for a while after my nice shower after I got here. Oh! It's hot in here. <laughs> So we've had dinner and we went to Ica to do some shopping for, for tomorrow morning and uh, now we've set up our tents here at the campground in Lixele. And the original plan was to keep going along the Euro Divide Trail uh, towards the town of Strömsund. But tonight we have had a little bit of planning and uh, I think we're actually gonna change our plans and head out towards the coast instead. Ryan only has about nine days until he's supposed to be in the very southern part of, of Sweden, Skåne. And we realized that he has a long way to go. So we're kind of altering our route and going on more paved roads to make up some distance. So we're now looking to find some nice roads with little traffic that will take us south here in Sweden. And one of the benefits of also heading out towards the coast is that we get to experience Höga Kusten or the high coast here in Sweden. It's a world heritage and it's really a hidden gem here in Sweden. It kind of reminds you of the fjords over in Norway. So it's one of the most pretty areas here in Sweden. And they've also built a new bike path that goes along the high coast for about 20 kilometers or so. So we're really looking forward to cycling along that road. And for my sake, my plan was to go to Strömsund or Östersund and take a bus back home. But that plan's been scratched right now. So I'm, I'm following Ryan out to the coast and probably going on a train back home to my hometown of Skellefteå in a couple of days time. I don't know really where this adventure is taking us but it also adds to the sense of adventure. So now it's about 10 in the evening and we're ready to, to hit the sleeping bags and recuperate after about 160 kilometers or 95 miles out on the roads here in northern Sweden. And for those who are new to my channel, while you wait for the next video in this series, you can watch my video that I did last year cycling from the Lofoden Islands in northern Norway all the way up to the North Cape by clicking the link up in the corner here. Otherwise, until next time, have a good one.